Today's video has been very highly requested by people in my school and people on the internet, and that is how to get a 9 or an A star in GCSE chemistry. If you're new here, hi, my name is Radhika, and I'm doing a GCSE revision series on my channel because students are returning to school after five months of doing nothing, and I want to help as many of you guys as I possibly can, and the best way that I can do that is through YouTube. Chemistry is definitely one of the hardest GCSEs, like I will openly admit that, but hopefully you can take away something from this video and get that 9 or A star in chemistry. This series is my way of helping you guys so I'd really appreciate if you could help me out by subscribing to my channel and also drop me a comment down below what other study content do you want to see because I've been really enjoying filming these type of videos and the series is nearly coming to an end so drop all your suggestions down below and without further ado let's get into the video so my first tip is for anyone that is constantly losing stuff and that is to use the support documents on your exam board's website so let's say for example I go on to Sia's website Sia was my exam board and I go under the support section there will be loads of different PDFs all with topic names and that's basically everything that's on the specification. I know that a lot of people lose their notes like I've done it before but I really don't like borrowing of other people because I think of it like well if they wanted to borrow off me then I would be really reluctant to let them do that so instead if you are someone that is constantly losing things or just can't keep everything organized then I'd recommend going onto your exam board's website and then downloading the support documents so you have backup copies of any notes. This is really useful for chemistry because there's a lot for chemistry and these support documents can always be there in your file and then you have like backup provision resources if you ever lose your stuff. My next tip relates to calculations, specifically quantitative chemistry. For those of you that don't know what quantitative basically is or haven't covered it yet, quantitative is essentially the maths part of chemistry. It is quite difficult at the start like I'm just going to be completely honest I found it very difficult to get my head around it because you're just given this quantity the mole and then you have to use it in so many different ways and it's very challenging to get your head around at the start but my tip here is to keep practicing questions as I started to practice and practice and practice I was gradually getting better and now I can just go from this calculation to this calculation to this calculation like I am very quick at it now but at the start I was so slow one of my tips for quantitative is to just accept it and I know some of you are like what does that even mean but just accept these equations like I still if I'm being completely honest don't exactly know what a mole is or what the definition is like I vaguely know it but I've just learned to accept that okay I need the mole so anytime I see grams I automatically think mole and the best practice resources for all these quantitative chemistry questions are literally textbooks I don't really like using textbooks for questions I don't know I just don't like the way it looks and all personal preference that's my opinion but I really like using it for quantitative because I think the maths part of the textbook is actually really good at explaining it and they've got really good laid out questions. So basically those are my quantitative tips. Number one, just accept it. Just learn to go with the flow when it comes to quantitative and gradually you will get better. And number two, practice makes perfect. Like the more questions you do, the faster you will get at answering them. And quantitative is definitely one of the most important topics in chemistry because I remember my teacher telling me that it's literally 25% of the overall exam paper, which is a lot when it comes to the chemistry paper and now if I look back on it I think those are actually easy marks like yes the questions are difficult at the start but as you do more of them it gets easier and you can just do it faster and you should be able to secure those marks which will get you closer to that nine or a star mark I want you to pause and think what is the first thing I think of when I hear the word chemistry. For me, it's practicals. Chemistry is all based on practicals. Literally everything we study is based on a practical experiment that we're then expected to know. So keeping that in mind, my next tip is to memorize how to do a practical or in other words, just learn off the method. I've said this in other videos. You're literally expected to know how to do something in the science paper and with chemistry, that's no exception. In fact, in chemistry, it's even more important because if you think about it, it's literally a practical subject and it's all based on methods and practicals and if you don't know how to do the method and you get a question asking you what the method is for this practical then you're not going to get those marks it's just as simple as that so my advice here would be to learn the practicals off by heart and learn the methods off by heart because to be completely honest 
Writing something from memory is pretty much the easiest thing that you can do in the exam. The other questions where you have to apply your knowledge are definitely way more challenging and you want to spend more time on those than questions asking you how to do a method. You want to be able to finish those in as little time as possible so that you can dedicate all your time to the more difficult, more challenging questions. And that's basically why learning the method of a practical is so important. Keeping on the same line of learning, learn processes off by heart. Processes are basically any chemical reaction that is done on like a mass scale. For SIA, I think one of them is to do with crude oil. There are others within organic chemistry and reduction. There's a few with iron as well and hematite. And those again are very easy marks. And think about it, if you can do all of those, that's literally all the easy part. That's the stuff that everyone should basically know and then they'll have harder questions like the quantitative ones earlier on to separate out the good and exceptional people so you really want to be hitting the exceptional side and you want to be making sure that you have a hundred percent in the good side which is why you need to know those processes off and so my tip here would be to constantly keep revising methods learning those equations which come under the methods and also just basically learn it the more you learn it, the, the quicker you'll be able to regurgitate it in the exam. And lo and behold, we have come to another learn bullet point. I'm sorry if I'm overwhelming you with the word learn 20 times, but trust me, when I was coming up with points for this video, I kept coming back to the word learn. And the reason for that is because in my mind, chemistry is all based on learning. If you think about it, the easy things are the things you have to learn off by heart. So sorry in advance for the amount of times I'm going to be saying the word learn, but that's just like the way my mind looks at it. If I know all of this already, then I don't have to worry about it. I can just focus on the more challenging and trickier questions. I don't know about you, but I don't like drawing diagrams in chemistry. I just think that I constantly keep losing marks for silly things such as, you know, the tube not going in properly or maybe not showing where the actual product is or something silly like that. So my next tip is to learn diagrams well. How can you learn diagrams well? Well, basically, in my eyes, you have to keep practicing. Practice makes perfect. Like, that is so cringy. I probably sound like a teacher right now while I'm saying that. But think of it as me being more of a friend rather than a teacher. And I'm just trying to be honest here. Diagrams are really easy marks. So it's really worth it taking the time to learn diagrams in advance. The best source for diagrams are textbooks because in my eyes, losing marks in diagrams is really, really annoying, especially when you know you could have done it properly, but then you might have just made a silly mistake somewhere and that just impacted the overall mark that you got. You already guessed what it is. It's another learning point. Learn color changes and the names of apparatus if you want to get really good marks in the practical paper. Color changes are definitely one of those more subjective things. There are loads of different options and it's really, really annoying when you see a textbook say something and you see other documents say other things, you see mark schemes say some things, teachers say other things. It's very annoying because you're like, which color is it? Is it green? Is it pale green? Is it yellow green? Is it blue green? Which green is it? So my advice here is to be very careful when you're talking about colors, specifically for metals. Copper is definitely very annoying because copper salts are different colors every time. Copper oxide is black, copper carbonate is green, anhydrous copper sulfate is white. There are so many different colors for copper. That's just an example. And here you just have to make sure that you're like actually talking about the right one. In addition to color changes, the second thing that I used to struggle with a lot was learning the names of apparatus. I know that's first year stuff, okay? Don't judge me. But once in an exam, I wrote weighing machine because I didn't know that the actual term was scale. So learn the proper names of apparatus. That was a really stupid mark to lose. I know that. Please don't make the same stupid mistake that I did. If you learn the proper names of apparatus, then you're already getting those easy marks and you're not making stupid mistakes like I did. And finally, just a few light miscellaneous tips that I think are also really, really, really important and are pretty much common sense. So I'm not going to go over them in too much detail. The first uh, miscellaneous tip is to buy the textbook. By textbook, I don't mean the actual thick textbook i mean the revision guide which is like this thin but it's amazing because everything is packed into that book the diagrams are really good and also i just really like the format of it like it's nice and colorful without being too in your face and it also has a really nice section where you can add all the dates for your exams so that you know okay i have to learn this by this if i want to get this and i just really like it overall it's a really good book 10 out of 10 would recommend i'm going to leave the link down below in case you want to buy it i think there's a discount currently going on i will look 
look into that for you guys and just check the description box for any more links or anything like that. The second miscellaneous tip is to find a note taking strategy that works for you. Now everyone differs when it comes to taking notes. Some people like to go for classic flashcards, other people like to go very digital and they like everything on a computer screen and some people are like me and I just like the classic file paper note taking system. I really don't have a special like note taking advice tip that I can give you. I'm going to be completely honest, I just use file paper and a plain blue pen, that's all I use to take my notes and maybe a couple of highlighters because I do like colour but I think it's very important to find a note taking strategy that works for you because chemistry is very very dense when it comes to how much there actually is to learn. There is a lot at GCSE, I'm at A level now and it's like gone up a step but even at GCSE I did find chemistry was a subject where I made most of my notes for so the best advice that I can give anyone for chemistry is to find a note taking strategy that works for you. There are plenty of study tubers on YouTube or Instagrammers on Instagram that do a lot of study related content and you could take inspiration from them. I just love the way they do all those feather titles and the really like really cute flowers and just the way they go in with all the colors but I am not artistic enough to do that but please I cannot stress this enough. Try and find a note taking strategy that works for you. Something which you know you can use and something which you like to look at because trust me if you don't like looking at it you're not going to learn it. And finally my last tip is to do past papers because past papers are your best friend when it comes to chemistry. GCSE chemistry is very repetitive. Like I cannot stress how repetitive it actually is and you will notice that as you look through past papers because literally every single question in a past paper comes up like the next year or the year after that in like a similar format. It's only worth like fewer marks. For example if it was worth three in 2015 it'll be worth two in like 2017. So just constantly keep doing past paper questions particularly for quantitative. I should have said that earlier but quantitative past paper questions are very repetitive and as you do more and more and more of them you will get better of them and you will get closer to that nine or a star mark. So that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was useful. As always timestamps will be down in the description box and if you want to find any more of my revision videos you can find them all in the back to school playlist on my channel. Also drop me a comment down below which tip do you think you're going to be using and what other study content do you want to see. Finally I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my audience, the people who watch my videos to the end, the people who are constantly commenting underneath them, you know who you are, the people who DM me on Twitter or Instagram. It really makes my day to see all of these lovely positive messages and I just love my audience. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and constantly supporting me. Thank you so much. And yeah that's all I have to say. I hope this video was useful and informative for you and I hope you get the 9 or 8 star in chemistry because you deserve it. Bye!